Hi, my name is Ivana from McKinley. In today's video, I would like to show you how easy it is to use all brushes and most importantly, without any airbrush. In today's video, we are weathering class 31 with a faded green effect and for this purpose I'm using this selection of oil paint and weathering powders. Before any weathering it's very important to have some reference material. We have a good selection of class 31 images. I'm going to use these tools today for weathering so what you need is, you need a piece of cloth, cotton buds, isopropanol or any kind of alcohol, little containers, sponges, pipette and selection of brushes. Very important part of weathering is to have a good selection of brushes. Brushes, they don't need to be very expensive, but I would like to emphasize that the worth investment is detailing brushes because you need to make sure your detailing are very good. I'm using as well flat brushes, different sizes. This is a size 11. The smallest size I'm using is number 2. And then I have a selection of uh, makeup brushes. I'm starting off with using medium grey oil brusher from company Mick by applying dots and I will blend as I go. After application of grey colour from our, our brusher, um, now I am comparing reference picture uh, with our model and I can see that this grey colour is not very good match. So what I, what I will do, I will apply faded green from company Mick. I'm using the same brush, just dip into into the pot and very lightly light brush strokes apply the powder If you want to cover windows, it's entirely up to you. Some people are using um, masking tape, some people are using um, the solution, which is kind of like a gum you can uh, take off later on. But I don't really use any of these um, because what I do, I use this effect as a part of the window, which I think looks dirty. And what I can do simply, I can just wipe it away with a cotton bud, like this. But that's something we can do, so this is a detail you do at the end. And 
and you can see that uh, this weathering powder helped a lot bring out more green and this is kind of a faded green I wanted to achieve. With application of green uh, weathering powder you can see that the number became more greener than we initially wanted so what you can do as well you can just wipe it off or what I tend to do as well I'm removing uh, the green from this front panel because if you think about it and uh, the fading is not um, even in the whole body of the loco as um, the locomotive was exposed in the real sun and what I will do as well, I will clean the windows when you are happy with faded green we are going to weather the roof I will use black color and dark brown Always make sure when you are working with the old brushes, you don't touch with your fingers what you have done because you will easily remove or damage your weathering process. So what I do, I just tilt again the whole locker towards to me so I can see the roof nicely without touching any part which are already done. So I'll do it like this. It's uh, entirely up to you uh, if you would like to use more black or you more dark brown. I will start with a dark brown because I think starting with the lighter colors is always a good decision. Don't be afraid, you can always wipe it off if you don't like it. And this time I will use a bigger brush. Remember that more tone you're using with the weathering, more realistic effect you'll achieve. So now I'm going to black and I will add more details. With a brush what are you trying to do? You're trying to get deeper into the grooves of the roof. That's exactly where dirt is supposed to be. We use a sponge now.
And I can see already how beautiful it is. Just drag it down. Now I'm very happy about it, so I can finish it off and I can move the locomotive and I will now do the lower part. Now I'm going to paint under frame by using uh, two colors. It's earth clay and dog mat and these are a very good selection for me. And what I'm going to as well use is I will use the advantage of this dark black color, which is original. So I'm not trying to cover it completely. So let me start with a dark mat. And this is pretty much the same. Again, I'm taking a um, brush. I'll blend in. Earth clay. And then we'll get that dark original color to show through. As I go as well, I'm slowly moving upwards. Very lightly touching the body. My suggestion would be to leave it at this stage and come back to it tomorrow or you know a few hours later and have a look again and if you see something is not quite right remove it you have a plenty of time still because this paint takes a few days until it's completely dry 
Um, unfortunately, we cannot do the other side because uh, we cannot really touch it at the moment, but after a few days you can come back to it and finish it off. If you wish to add more texture or different tones, this is a stage when it's still wet. You can do it because all paint is still tacky. So I will bring uh, my weathering palette and let's say I can use this earth tone. I can add in a very light manner a little bit of different texture and what I like to do as well is sometimes introduce very random touch of light color before we finishing um, everything I would like to show you a little trick so these two colors silver and gunmetal I'm using to bring out metal details of the model. So for the kind of metal, I will use it in a very, very light way. Make sure the brush is not full of color. You can as well wipe it off the cloth. Because all I have to use is tiny, tiny bit to highlight The metallic parts. I will use some for the steps because this place is used quite often, probably not covered as much with the rust or mud. And as well what I can do, I can back I can come back to the to the body and if I see there is some metallic parts like for the handles I can cover them in this dark shade of silver and as a last thing I will paint buffer shaft with a silver paint this is a very good tip here when you take off the paint from the brush, try to clean it like this and try to, by wiping like this, try to make your brush very flat. You can see it. I'm making it very flat. And this is how I can get close exactly how I need. Achieving uh, even more realistic look, I will get back to the main part of the body and I will use dark brown to get inside of the grills. I hope you have enjoyed how we weathered locomotives at McKinley today.